Seven minutes to nine, we are on to the last segment of the show, and that is your money. And I'm sure you're familiar with the saying that disability is not inability. But with the affirmative action, one of the things that, of course, the government would like to see is people with disability also given uh, equal opportunity at their places of employment. But that does not start at the point of employment. It starts at the point of training. And if they do not get the right training, then, of course, it would be a challenge for them to get jobs. So that's that's what we'd like to focus on this morning, and I'll start by introducing the guests that we have this morning. And to my extreme left, I have uh, Moses. No, sorry, I have Stephen Miner. No, I take that again. I have uh, Moses Chira, who is uh, uh, blind but also is training in journalism. Uh, I also have Stephen Miner, who's from KIPS, and KIPS is Kenya Institute of Professional Studies. Thank you for joining us. And last but not, lo not least, we have Patience Dosita, who is from Decapture. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning. And let me start uh, with Moses, because Moses, you have a rather unique story. You were not born blind. No. Okay, what happened? Uh, I had uh, glaucoma from way back, and uh, I have been uh, I had been on medication for a while, mm -hmm. and then uh, my sight started get, getting worse. And uh, in the year 2015, uh, I you know, it was decided by my doctors that I should have uh, a surgery done on me, you know, to save my sight. But uh, in the process, after the because uh, I had a laser surgery, they ended up scarring my retina. So. I lost my peripheral, my so uh, my my sight. That okay. just like that. So currently, I, you're completely 100% uh, blind. Uh, not really. I can see shadows. Okay. And uh, maybe in the light, mm -hmm. and maybe uh, through with my just that little peripheral vision, I can see movement, just a little bit of movement. Okay. But other than that, none. You can, okay, but you were not born that way. How old were you when this happened? When I lost my sight, you know, I, was, I was 25, because it's like three years ago. Three years ago? Yeah. Wow. So you had already started pursuing your career in journalism, or did you start that after um, the surgery? No, I started after. Okay. Because uh, way back, um, I cleared high school in 2010, then joined college, did graphic design, uh, cleared in 2012, started hustling. And uh, later got a job in Akuru. So when I, the surgery was being done, I was currently I was, at that time I was a, I was a I was a graphic designer. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me come to you, patients. What's your story? Mm, my story. I I am the sister patient. I'm from Congo. So I live here in Nairobi, like a refugee. Like a refugee. Yeah. Okay. And were you also born, were you born disabled? Uh, it's uh, about uh, a war. Feel free if, if you prefer Swahili. Okay. Uh, I was born Swahili. I was born in the Congo. I was born in the Congo. So it was a war. You were born in the Congo? Yeah. Okay. And I was born in the Congo. Yeah. And you were born in the Congo? Yeah. Okay. Now... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Na, um, your dream, what has been your dream career? Okay, my dream is to be a journalist, but the, I have to start small. I started to be a photography and the video, videography, but now I started to be a journalist. That's what you'd like to do? Yeah. Okay. And let me come to you, Stephen. Uh, you, uh, through KIPS, Kenya Institute of Professional Studies, have made a deliberate effort to ensure that you give an equal playing field to persons living with disability. Definitely. Uh, how have you done that? Now, thank you very much for this platform, eh? for us to talk about the disabled people. Actually, let me say this. When we talk about uh, disability, it's not inability. What it tries to mean is that we have to create an equal opportunity, but you cannot define individuals by their physical appearance. Correct. We must define individuals by their own depositions. This means, in a, for example, in education sector, because this way we are going to measure it, in training process of disabled persons. We have to create an equal platform for all people to get equal opportunities for them to explore and exploit their potentials and their capability, not based on whom they are, 
not based on how they are physically. Because I like saying this, disability is not in physical, disability is in mental. Technically, as an institution, we have created a good platform. And uh, if Moses can give you a story here, for Moses to find his way at Kips, he had gone to several institutions. But I remember when he approached me and he asked me for opportunity to train in Kips. We gave him and we welcomed him. What, what, what we have done, we have a dynamic types of training, not only theoretically, but a more of hands-on training. Because these people, what they require, it is skills and competencies. Okay, let, let, let me just hear from Moses because yeah. I'd like to uh, tag on that. Moses, was it a challenge to find an institution where you could train for what you wanted to do purely because of your uh, inability or your impaired vision? Yeah, quite, uh, pretty much. Uh, when at, the, uh, at that time I had just uh, completed uh, my course in Braille and audio, pro uh, audio computers. And then I decided, you know what, I always wanted to do radio, even before I did graphic design. So I said, no way. Uh, I won't let my sight just, you know, hold me Get back. In your way. Yeah, because mm. I wanted to be on radio. And radio is all about uh, talking, entertaining, you know. So I started calling one institution to, uh, to, to the next. Uh, and whenever I mentioned that I am visually impaired, you, you hear some, you know, like some silence. You know, like they let it that sink in, and then they'll tell, oh, they'll just call you. But they'll tell you, no, uh, we don't have facilities for people with vision, with visual impairment, or people with disability. So, it was a challenge. It was a challenge. Yeah. Okay. And uh, maybe from you, patients, you come up here, only patashida kupata mali ambapo neza ku train ili to pursue your dream of uh, journalism. Okay. It was shida. The first thing, she kuwa na confidence. Junifika shule nikaona ni mimi mremafu peke yangu so ku feel free na, na wenzangu kuongea nao ilikuwa ngumu kwangu so the second nilikuwa naogopa kuchukua camel nasema nikichukua camel na mkono mmoja maybe naweza ivunja ama nifanyikie kitu kingine nilipe na sina pesa za kulipa but sasa after hapo kidogo kidogo tu na feel confident confident ika, ika, ika grow yeah. Na sasa tu, tuchukue kama sa, tuseme camera. A camera requires uh, maybe mkono moja ya kushika, ingine ya kufocus, maybe zoom in, zoom out. Yeah. Uh, do you need a specific, special kind of camera? No. Unatumia tuile ya kawaida? Yeah. Yoyote, mwenye kuna mkono mbili kama yote na eza tumia na mina eza itumia. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Stephen. Yes. Was this uh, something that you did deliberately, but maybe even before that, what would you want to see implemented in institutions, especially to give a level playing field to those with disabilities? Because for them to get jobs in uh, corporates, to get jobs in the market, they need to be trained. Definitely. Statistically, 10% of any populations in any country, globally, is comprises of disabled persons. But to me, this is a huge percentage, and it cannot be ignored. They have a voice in the society, and they, they need to be equipped. Therefore, in the education sector, the ministry and the key stakeholders, they have a big role to play. First of all, if you look at the training of the teachers themselves, generally, currently, you will normally hear about the schools for disabled. But actually, back in our mind, what is happening to these people? Are we setting them aside? Are we selling them they, are, they don't belong to other people? They cannot be included with other people who are able to... In, in a you know, usual school. In a usual schools? Mm -hmm. Definitely that is a long approach. Definitely what I can recommend in training sector, first of all, we need to equip, to equip our teachers. They need to have a holistic training in a manner of to handle these people. Because I believe eh, we have several institutions, eh, for example, that trains teachers on how to handle people with special needs. But actually, that is a, just a drop in the ocean. We need to have a holistic training of teachers. These teachers, they need to be taught how to handle these people. They need to know how the, the syllabus itself must also be amended in order to incorporate accommodate. The, accommodate the form of training. Number two, for example, at this level of training, the tertiary level of training, after form four, and now we come to where, pe where people, where we are training and instilling skills for this training. At that level of training, we need the government to, to put more resources 
in tertiary, tertiary technical colleges, whereby if, when this student comes in training, we train them not based on how they are, but what they can do. This requires a lot of resources. And actually, I thank the government because it has come up with a platform law, maybe the issue of HELOB and the issue of the bursary to tertiary training level. But I'm also, what I can recommend us, even the infrastructure itself. For example, we have the people who are maybe uh, who, who are disabled, maybe they don't have legs. But if you look at the infrastructure, how the institution have set up. Just it's access to get to a classroom, access to use. It, it's access to use, it is becomes very difficult. Mm -hmm. So generally, the approach that we can take those people who are in, in the education sector, we need proper infrastructure holistically. Okay. And again, if I mention something here, community at large, it has a role to play. It is quite pathetic and it's so sad when normally you see families and society setting aside not what to expose these people who are disabled. For example, in country Kenya, not once, not twice, we have had these stories in the media whereby some parents hide their children. What are you doing? You are denying these children opportunity. Remember. And also stigmatizing them. And too. even stigmatizing them, which is very wrong. Therefore, it is the responsibility of all the stakeholders, starting with the parents, starting with the institutions, again with the institutions, going back to the government, at least when it comes to the training of these people, let them be included holistically, okay. let them not be set aside. All right, Moses, how far are you on your journey to becoming a radio presenter? Because I think that's what you are pursuing. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I've already, I kicked off like two months ago. So I have, I think, two, two three more months to go because I'm, I'm, I'm only doing the radio part of it. Okay. Yeah. And what opportunities would you be seeking to find uh, out there once you've uh, finished your training? Because uh, I'm ma just uh, majorly just doing uh, continue to present uh, presentation presenting uh, is so I think just to be a presenter on radio. Just, on radio. Yeah. Okay. Patience. Your how far are you on your journey to becoming a what kind what journalism would you want to do? I want to be a journalist. A reporter, presenter, anchor, presenter. producer, presenter. Yeah. Okay. But sasa, kukua presenter, si kuka hapa, ni wangeve, ni meletewa hama nye. Kukua mutangazaji ule muyatasaidia wale mawo. For example, hapa Nairobi, ni metembea saidi zote, ni meona wale mawo, wameka. Even more to do, I can have more work. I but I can't say my because government is organizing our work. We are calling for people. We are doing this. We are doing a group. We are doing a case. We are not doing a tangazaji. We are doing our work. Was idea? Yeah. Okay. And Moses, maybe your message to persons living with disability, because patience brings out an important point there. Okay. There is the society that would want, you know, to help. But also we have some who already uh, feel that there's not much that they can do. Well, the thing is, first, uh, with any kind of disability, you've got to accept yourself. That's the first step. Secondly, once you accept yourself, now seek out opportunities um, and also surround yourself with people who who bring out some the positive the positivity part of life in you you know so that with that you can always expand from there yeah because like for me it was really hard to accept like, that i've lost sight because it, it was a shocker and I, I had it's to, something you did not expect. I wasn't expecting it because I knew uh, in with me, but with me, I thought with this laser surgery, my sight will be perfect. I'm going back to my job. Everything will go back to normal. But things turned around and I had to start from ground zero. Mm -hmm. Somewhere I never even expected to. So it's, it's really hard. But for the guys out there who've lost sight, especially because uh, I really want to focus on people with visual impairment. Once you lose your sight, it's, it's okay to go, to go all the way down. You know, it's okay to sink down. Because once you sink down, then you're able to even build yourself up. Because you can't start afresh when you're midway. Yeah? Because it's really hard. 
difficult, but it's, you have to reach a point where you accept what yes, has happened you have and to. begin to build from there. Exactly. All right, as we wind up, uh, Stephen, yes. do institutions then need to have a special category of uh, teaching, for example, because you're dealing with somebody who's not just trying to learn, but also maybe suffering from lack of confidence and stigmatization. Yeah, definitely. Let me say this. The two people we have here, they present a sample. A sample that has defied all odds. A sample that has accepted to move on as far as disability is concerned. And for my sister here, it's a sad story to hear that he lost his hand because of violence, which is because it's not acceptable across the group. Now, when it comes to the institutions, as we, as Moses is trying to say here, one, you need to build self-confidence of these people. They need to have their self-esteem laced because self-acceptance is very key in any form of training. As much as they want to train in a certain field, but again, deep within their heart, deep within their spirit, they could be fearing something is amiss. Therefore, the role of institution definitely, they have to have a robust form of training and they have a section of guidance and counseling that is quite vibrant. For example, within our institution, we have a section of guidance and counseling. And I am sure when Moses came in, one thing that we did was to expose him to counseling session, such that as he goes on with his training, there is also that part of healing and accepting and facing the reality. Definitely, the institution have a big role to play when it comes to building and lifting their spirits. All right, and I'll finish with you, patients. You're going to have the last word as the lady on set. Ni ujumbe gani ungependa kuwatumie kusema kwa wale wengine wale mavu ambao wanaona ni kama hawawezi lakini wewe umejiondoa ukasema kwamba hata kama nikiwa na ulemavu mimi nitapasu na nitafuata ndoto la langu Kile naweza waambia the first thing you have a dream and you have a goal and you have to achieve your dream feel confident for who you are Two, mimi na mimi nilikuwa na jogo pa mimi mwenyewe. Siwezi nikafanya hivi na hivi. Siwezi nikakuwa photograph. Lazima tu niende nisome, nikuwe presenter, bishie hapo. But sasa niliangalia nikasema vile naona wenzangu wale mavu wako hapa nje wanateseka na nafaa niwasaidia. Nianze nisome photography. Nikutane nao tufanye group for example sasa nimeanza kufanya group ya waremavu na wafunza vile tunaweza fanya training za kutembea na mabicycle even hata kama uko na mkono mmoja mguu mmoja unaweza endesha bicycle hiyo nilianza so kitu kingine naweza waambia ni watoke kwa barabara even hata kama una miguu unaweza tembea kwa nyumba za watu kiwaambia nataka kufua ukifua utachukua 200 200 inaweza ripewa watoto twende every day inaweza ripewa watoto siku kaa nje kupeleka watoto kwa barabara at the end waambie watu wakusaidie wakiomba yeah mm. so kinyenyeza waambia ni wa free confidence na wajione kama ni watu disability is not inability all right asante sana patients uh, from the capture we also have uh, steven minor from kips which is kenya institute of uh, professional studies and last but not least moses chira who's uh, studying journalism at kips thank you very much for joining us this morning on your money and enlightening us on people living with disability also being given an equal opportunity it is now eight minutes to nine time for us to wind up and we want to take this opportunity to thank you for watching morning express and staying and keeping us company we do wish you a wonderful and a great day. God bless you. However, do stay with us right here on KTN News. We've got News Center coming up with Brenda in just a bit. So do stay with us.